Hi guys, in this video today we're going to talk about graphing the cosine function. Now remember on the last video we actually got cut off of that last example, so I'm going to start this video with a video from the last example um, from the previous page. So if you'll turn the page back a page, we're going to start with this example and talk it through first. Okay, this example has a lot going on. That one half tells me the amplitude. Um, there is no number in front of the x. Notice here I'm calling it x instead of theta. That's okay. Don't let that confuse you. x and theta are interchangeable. They're just variables. Some textbooks use x, some textbooks use theta. It doesn't really matter which one you use. So here I've stuck it in an x instead of a theta, but what we're looking for is the b. The b is 1. So my period is 2 pi over b, which in this case is just 2 pi. And so once again that gives me my tick marks for my x-axis are 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Okay, so pi over 2 is going to be our x-axis increments. I'm going to go ahead and put those on here. Amplitude, we talked about that already. Phase shift is moving left and right. We do have one here. Do you see that? Our phase shift, it's a plus, which means left, and it's left pi over 4. That means when we're starting out, we're not going to start out the origin we're going to move over 1. Well, 1 because it's pi over 4. So, okay, notice how we've set it up. That half of this would be pi over 4, and half of this would be negative pi over 4. One box over is where we're going to start, one box to the left. The vertical shift, there is none. So our highway is going to remain with a center line at 0. So we're going to have a midline at y equals 0. Um, let's start to fill some things in. Amplitude of 1 half Midline of 0, I think I'm going to call this 1, 2, and that's going to make this a 1 half. You can even zoom in more if you wanted to. Here's the deal. When you take a test on this, it's just really important that you put these hash marks in here so the grader knows because let me show you another graph for just a second. These two graphs, they look really similar, and the grader wouldn't know which one's which unless you had the... the the um, tick marks on your y-axis showing that this is only a 1 half and this is a 3. Otherwise, you could have zoomed in at different levels. All right, it's getting kind of crowded in here because the amplitude is only 1 half, but the midline is at 0, amplitude is at 1 half. So normally we would start at 0, 0, but we're not going to. We have to go left pi over 4. So we're actually going to start here now, okay? Then we're still going to go up 1 and right pi over 2, which lands me here. Down 1, right pi over 2. Down 1, right pi over 2. Up 1, right pi over 2. And I could stop there because that gives me one period. But I do want to go the other way just to get a, a little bit more filled in. So I'm going to go down and then left pi over 2. Up, left pi over 2. Up left pi over 2, and so there's the other side of my graph. Look how similar that looks to all the other graphs we've done. You would really just have to pay attention to see it's not starting at the 0, 0. Usually we start here, but we didn't. We moved everything over, the pi over 4 block, and moved a whole graph over, and that's what we have here. Okay, there's a lot of information that we could do for review for summary. Um, these four terms are important, and how we find the x-axis is important, how we find the y-axis is important, how we find the midline is important. All of that is important information that you might want to write down. Okay, now we're ready to talk about cosine. And cosine is very, very similar to a sine graph. In fact, I'm going to show you on the graphing calculator what they look like. So here's my graphing calculator. The sine wave, we know, starts at the middle and goes up. So the sine wave is this blue one. The cosine graph is a little bit different. Um, if you can see, it has the same amplitude, and it actually has the same period, like the same length to it. The only difference is, instead of starting in the middle and going up, the cosine graph starts at the top of the wave and goes down. So that's one thing that is actually the main difference. Okay, so now let's go back to the paper and graph this cosine. So I have set up my graph already. Um, I've set up my hash marks. Once again, I'm just going to skip one, every other one, to count one and two. Um, on the 
x-axis, once again, we have the same hash marks, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And so now we're just ready to graph it. And so like I said, this graph goes from the top of the wave and goes down. So it starts up here, and then it goes down 1, right, pi over 2, down 1, right, pi over 2, up 1, right, pi over 2, and up 1, right, pi over 2. Now it still has those four parts to it, it's just a different starting place and a different ending place. So here's one, two, three, four. There's the four pieces. It looks a little bit different, kind of like a U with these bumps on the end. But if we continue it on, it will look very similar to a sine graph. So let's go to the left side. And again, we're going to go down one, right pi over two, down one, right pi over two, up one, right pi over two, up one, right pi over two. And so once again, we have the other side. Um, it's kind of like a U, but when we look at it all together, it looks very similar to the sine wave, just starting at the top and going down from there. Okay, this graph at the bottom, I don't think we really need to fill in this graph. Um, similarities with the sine graph has the same amplitude, the same period. It also has the same transformation rules, and we're going to go over those on the next page. Um, the difference is the sine cosine starts at the top and goes down, whereas the sine starts in the middle and goes up. One thing we might do at the top again, think about that sine wave. Remember, the sine wave starts at the middle and goes up. And so it's going to go like this. And so if we go on the left-hand side again, we're going to continue that wave. This green one is the sine wave. The blue one is the cosine wave. All right, let's go ahead and turn the page and look at the transformations. Same transformations. This information is the same exact information we wrote down on the other side. The only difference is it's a cosine. That means it has a different starting place. But we still have the amplitude in the front. We still do the pi over 2, pi, excuse me. We still do the 2 pi over b for the horizontal stretch, which is their, our x-axis. Um, phase shift, same place. Vertical translation, same place. Okay, so if we look at this graph, one thing is the graph paper looks a little bit different. Um, I just used a different type of graph paper, but we're still going to do the same thing here. Um, looking at the equation, the period is always 2 pi over b, which in this case is just 2 pi. And that helps us set up our x-axis. So our x-axis, we're going to take that 2 pi and divide by 4, which is going to give us a pi over 2. So when we set these up on our x-axis, we're going to count by pi over 2's. So I'm going to set up my x-axis. My amplitude is 2. That's the number in the front. The phase shift is left pi, because that plus pi tells me I need to move over 1. And then minus 3 is a vertical shift. And that down 3, that's why I came down here. And so that down 3 tells me that my center line, my midline, is going to be here at negative 3. The amplitude says from that point, my highway is going to be 2 units above and 2 units below. Phase shift, left pi, and then we've already talked about the vertical shift. Okay, typically with a cosine, we would start at the top of the wave and go down, right? We are still going to do that, but we have to start over left pi. So that means we have to start way over here, left pi units, and now we're going to go and I didn't label this one, but this is pi over 2. So we're going to go down 2, because the amplitude is 2, and over pi over 2. Down 2, over pi over 2. Up 2, and up 2. And so here's one period of my cosine wave. Now I want to go ahead and finish it out, so I typically like to have at least 2 if I can. I'm just going to finish out where I have on the graph paper. Just continuing that pattern, and this is my graph. Let's just take a look at it. It is cosine, which means it starts at the top and goes down. It's left negative 2, that's why, excuse me, left pi, that's why it's over here. The amplitude is 2. My center line or midline is at negative 3. Okay, one more example. This time it's a negative cosine. So we just have to keep that in mind. Um, our period this time is 2 pi over 2 or in other words, just pi. And that means that we're going to take our x-axis and divide by 
that period divide by 4. So that means each of these is going to be pi over 4, and then pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. So we're counting by pi over 4s this time because we take our period and divide by 4. Our amplitude. It's a negative 1, but our amplitude is really just 1. But this might be a good place to say that this is going to be reflected over the x-axis. In other words, it's going to be upside down. Um, so in other words, normally when we look at our first period of our cosine, it's going to look like this. It's going to be flipped upside down. And instead, it's going to be a bump. Something like this. Okay, phase shift. That's when it's inside there. There is none. Vertical shift, though, there is. It does go up one. That tells us that that is our center line, our midline, goes here at positive one. And it only has an amplitude of 1, so it's going to go up to here and down to here. Okay, so let's start to graph this. No phase shift. Um, typically, we would start at the top of the wave and go down, but it's reflected. So instead of starting at the top of the wave and going down, we're going to start at the bottom of the wave and go up. So our first period is going to look like this. It's reflected. It's upside down. We can continue to fill in the other ones if we have space. So like over here, we can fill in this. And then over here, we can, okay, arrows on the end. So that's graphing cosine. Very, very similar to graphing sine. And um, the difference is just where does it start, whether it starts at the top or in the middle. If you want to see these on the graph, um, I did, I have put them on the graph also, just so we can see on, on um, our graphing calculators what they look like. Okay, so the blue and the red are the cosine and sine functions. Um, the blue one being the sine, the red being the cosine. The one down here is the one that um, was example number five. Uh, it had the center line at negative three. So we can see that, one, two, three, here's our center line. It goes off the graph a little bit because I didn't set up my window to fit all of it in there. You could set your window. The pink line at the top is the sixth one, example number six. It looks a lot um, skinnier, if you want to say, than the one we did on the paper, but that's just because our units are different. Remember I said it's really important to label those graph the graph paper with your units. So number six, this pink one, it has the same um, amplitude, but the period is much shorter. So it's just as tall as these other ones, but it is much skinnier, um, it's half as fat as these guys are, and that's because that um, cosine of 2x, that b in there, that 2x, made it half as wide. 